Okay. So I'm very happy to introduce Dr. Suresh. He's from Bangalore. He's a professor of psychiatry and uh, the head of RNC Psychiatry Unit and the head of uh, Telemedicine Center and the head of Unit 5 of General Psychiatry. He's heading uh, Nimhans Digital Academy. Uh, so he's from Nimhans, Bangalore, and he has 372 publications in national and in international journals, including editor of 12 books. Uh, I talked about his membership, that he's a member uh, member of the Committee of Experts, constituted by Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Nirman Baba New Delhi for framing rules and regulation under the Mental Health Act uh, 2017. He is also the member of the Experts Committee to advise Karnataka State Board to establish a rehabilitation center for mentally ill patients. He is also the member of the State Committee for drafting maximum standard of mental health uh, establishment uh, for new Raipur Satishgarh State. And regarding publication, he's several publications in national, national and international journals. His areas of interest are forensic psychiatry, community psychiatry, telemedicine, human rights, and the persons with mental illness and obsessive compulsive disorders. So this is about uh, Dr. Suresh. So um, I welcome Dr. Suresh. And uh, before we proceed, uh, I should say something uh, that uh, I really appreciate the person behind this event who has conceptualized uh, because now uh, it's a very high time to comprehend uh, what these technologies, these advanced uh, technologies are bringing in front of us and few things are uh, going to be very much beneficial or few things could be very much deleterious. Uh, in the in the very introduction, if I uh, talk about the digitalization digitalization world, then uh, I must say a few words that it is having so many uh, good aspects. But if I talk about AI, then this artificial intelligence, then I must quote a uh, few of the sayings of the few of the great scholars, few are dead and few are alive. But, uh, if I talk about the Stephen uh, Hawking, Stephen Hawking, he he is one of the very ones. Uh, worry that is uh, the dangers, the dangers those are associated with human extinction. Uh, Dr. Stephen Hawking comprehended this, uh, this AI one day would be the cause of uh, extinction of human race from this uh, beautiful planet Earth. And the uh, same thought is uh, also shared by Dr. Michio Kaku, who is the, the University of Theoretical Physics at the uh, University of uh, New York. He is uh, frequently he used to come up in the social media in various platforms, uh, expressing his uh, uh, worries with this artificial in intelligence. So uh, to simplify, if I talk a little bit about this art, uh, this AI, it is simply this is this is the algorithm. Those are uh, driven by the data data driven, newer data, and, and ultimately the machine learned new things. And today's topic is in right hand, uh, Dr. Suresh, I suppose the Dr. Suresh will be addressing this uh, topic very well. Though one of our uh, colleague of uh, member of Indian Psychiatric Society, um, Dr. Om Prakash uh, has recently published his concerns about, has given introduction about this, what this chat GPT is and how it is going to impact. So we all are eagerly waiting for Dr. Suresh. So I welcome Dr. Suresh and uh, invite him to start his presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Shahul, would you like to add something? I guess a few points. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks to the organizers for the opportunity. Thanks to all of you for being here today evening. Uh, for the, like those of us who are above 40, for the past more than two decades, we have been uh, watching the advent of various technologies and also observing and discussing their various pros and cons. In the early years of the millennium, the internet started getting popular in India and there were lots of discussion about uh, internet addiction, uh, then uh, pornography addiction, addiction to online gambling, then the concerns about the misinformation, uh, then uh, um, also, there were lots of positive aspects like uh, we were, many of us were using internet for uh, psychoeducation. There were a lot of online support groups, etc., etc. So after that, after a, about a decade of that, came the smartphones and apps, and all again the same thing repeated. There were lots of good things like apps that uh, help you 
uh, monitor your symptoms or uh, track your medication intake or even uh, uh, apps that um, uh, help give uh, therapies like from simple relaxation techniques to very complicated uh, CBT and all. And also in combination with various wearable devices, we were able to track the people's uh, patients' uh, mood and sleep and behaviors, etc., etc. So there were lots of discussion about that. Also, the the disadvantages like again addiction, again pathologies like uh, nomophobia, things like that. A lot has been said about that. And the latest kit on the block is basically the, what we just discussed, the big data, the machine learning and all. Uh, so uh, I am sure that Dr. Suresh will be talking to us a lot about that. Already people have started like uh, using ChatGPT and also others like uh, Google Bard and uh, uh, Microsoft's Bing AI and all uh, to like gather information, which is basically based on a huge amount of data, as my fellow chairperson said. And also like, uh, it is providing therapy, it is providing support to those who are alone and all. And this has its own role, especially when we consider the huge treatment gap that exists in the country. At the same time, already concerns have been raised about confidentiality, privacy, accuracy of the information, et cetera, et cetera. And also, like, as the title of this presentation uh, suggests, like whether uh, AI and all these kind of tools are going to throw us out of the field, the psychiatrists are going to be jobless or not. And I'm sure that Dr. Suresh will be discussing both the aspects, both the good and bad of uh, uh, the new technology. Over to you, Dr. Suresh. Uh, thank you uh, to the organizers and also to the chairperson. They have made my life easy by giving the introduction. So let's move into the topic uh, that is whether AI will replace mental health professionals. We will answer this question with the evidence. So before that, the conflict of interest, none. I have not been paid by anybody to give this talk. So this is the area of interest where uh, I've been working since many years with regard to being telemedicine in charge and also uh, doing work in the area of digital. So in this uh, next maybe around 35 minutes, I'll be spending time in answering the six important question. What is artificial intelligence? How artificial in intelligence is implemented in digital mental health intervention specifically? What is the future of clinical practice in artificial intelligence? How it is going to influence the clinical practice? That is the third question. Fourth, how effective is digital health interventions? How will psychiatry teaching that is academics and research will change in the era of AI? And finally, what are the challenges in using AI? And finally, the bonus will be whether we will be replaced by AI will be answering in the last slide. So I'll be spending time in answering this question. So let's, we'll talk about what is AI. This is for many of us who are youngsters, we know about artificial intelligence. There are senior citizens who need to know about artificial intelligence. It is there since 1956. John McCarthy, an American computer scientist spoke about this and the new era of starting artificial intelligence as a curriculum and also a subject came into picture. And there are two important aspects of artificial intelligence. That is, uh, artificial intelligence is a umbrella term in that there is a machine learning and deep learning. So both, uh, it's an umbrella term actually. In that machine learning and deep learning is there. Let's understand about machine learning. I will not go into the nitty gritty of that, but uh, roughly you need to know so that you will understand how it is going to play a role in our clinical practice. What we should know about machine learning is it enable it basically machine learning is it enables the software application to become more accurate in predicting outcome without being explicitly programmed to do so. I'll give an example. If you now uh, we are using PowerPoint. Now all the Microsoft wants PowerPoint to be enabled by artificial intelligence or machine learning. What does it mean? Sir, I'm doing PowerPoint. I'm using it. How it is going to make a change? Now PowerPoint will come up with their own artificial intelligence. And they say that you type a topic, maybe bipolar disorder, the artificial intelligence of PowerPoint will generate the PowerPoint for you. It will be 10 slides, 20 slides based upon the subscription. They will give you the ready-made PowerPoint you edit on it. That will be enabling. That means it will do work for you. So that is machine learning. So what is this next one is the subset, the deep learning, what does it mean? Deep learning is nothing but they are trying to emulate how the brain works, human brain works. That is based upon artificial neural networks. We will not go into the detail, but it's basically it, they are trying to mimic the neurons by playing, placing different levels 
of network they call it as a nodes it is similar to if you ask me synapses in that area they are already started working so that means we are going in a very fast with regard to technology but medicine is not growing or the services especially access to healthcare is not happening but the it is growing very fast so this is about deep learning so if you look at in general how it is growing uh, how the artificial intelligence training occurs and how it is going to impact us first is invariably there will be a data collection because when you develop you have to develop a model data collection will be done example i can give you if i want to because i'm working in forensic psychiatry also tomorrow i want to know lie detection so then we have to generate come up with a study maybe 100 students will be given a task to tell lie and another 100 students will be told not to tell lie a facts will be given so then we will be doing data collection by looking at the facial expression then we have to do a data pre-processing of those how the facial expression occurred it may be based upon their eye movements how the left side of the face uh, behaves right side of the face behaves how he is making the eye movements and then we need to see how many told lie and we have to do a training of the model once the training is done we have to test it and validate whether it is recognizing the right people who are telling lie who are not telling lie and then the deployment further refinement occurs it is just like releasing the drug into the market but for the drugs, there is a huge regulation. You, you can't imagine before the drug comes into the market is around 20 years. That is the time duration. For a software, every month there is a new software in the block. That means the regulations are very less with regard to IT industry. Whereas health industry, there are many regulations. So this is how the training, AI training occurs. Now there is a classification based upon competency and functionality. Where we are, narrow AI is the competency-based artificial intelligence. What is narrow AI? The Siri, what we have in our iPhone, or else you can Alexa is a simple one. We can say that is the narrow artificial intelligence. What is general AI? The general AI is nothing but what chat GPT is. I, I request all of you to go and try out chat GPT. It is a, a wonderful uh, tool which is going to change the way we are going to interact with the world. What is strong AI? Strong or super intelligence, artificial intelligence. It is a still a hypothetical concept. Some of them are working. Some of them are very successful, but still it's not into the market. That is competency-based. Functionality-based, it is a reactive machine. Reactive machine is text-based audio, audio-based text, limited memory. Again, the theory of mind and self-awareness, it is the highest level. Still people are working. So we are still, if you ask me, somewhere near... 10th standard of artificial intelligence. That means still it has to grow, become a degree graduate, uh, maybe postgraduate, PhD. And then we don't know whether this graduate, whoever is a postdoctoral fellow who comes out, will do harm to the society or is going to help the society. That is the question we are going to answer now. So now this AI has evolved. Uh, let me put it in a very simple way. What is this AI? Uh, very simple way is we know the Google we are using. When we do that search engine, it gives all the websites. That is the first level we can think of. And then they started rating the websites based upon how many people are visiting, how much they are giving money. That is, they are giving an uh, algorithm for that. That is the first level of AI. Similarly, in PubMed, what we do is in PubMed, we go and search. We have 35 million articles. So now if you type even for schizophrenia, we'll get around 5 lakh to maybe 10 lakh articles on schizophrenia. That is the first level. Now the second is if you if we introduce artificial intelligence into PubMed, you type treatment of schizophrenia, simple words, it will give you a review article on schizophrenia treatment. It will be a review article or it can be a systematic review article. It will write and give it to you directly within a matter of 5 to 10 minutes or maybe even 5 minutes. That means it has started doing critical review. As a first year MD students, this artificial intelligence is going to that critical review. We have come to that now. Not only cataloging, we are moving towards the reviewing those articles. So that is how it is happening. That is the first question I have answered. How, what is AI and how it is now at that present state. So how AI is, if it is implemented in digital mental health intervention, how it is implemented? So digital mental health intervention is to the use of information and technologies in the field of medicine. 
and other health allied professions to manage mental illness mental distress health risks and to promote wellness here wellness also comes in that's where we have been till date we are talking about to prevent you promote you now the software engineers are coming and telling that we have brought the gym application we have brought the wellness application use it at the same time we as the health professional we are saying how can these application without testing be brought here so that is the question they are directly asking us so now let's understand the digital technology can be two types which is one is device based another one is without device let me answer that how it is going to make the difference but anyhow device based is everybody is having a smart watch that smart watch is collecting some data based upon the sensors that is device based without devices although you have the mobile phone there is no separate device to it it is also collecting certain data so where are you going which area you are moving that is without device but still there is iphone iphone or maybe uh, android phone let me put it in a, again uh, conflict of interest none i have not been paid by any of this company to talk about either iphone or android coming to the applications there are seven different types have been utilized in mental health chatbots and the virtual assistants are becoming very popular and uh, it is used in all internet and also nowadays uh, these have been used in various places for providing help to the patients natural language processing it is nothing but chat gpt kind of thing it can be used predictive analysis that will be the next level where high risk assessment will be used who are at risk of suicide who are risk at violence nowadays they are using in various places especially in the campus who is going to become violent or not violent inside the prison emotional recognition i spoke to about that personalized treatment intervention that is the next level why it is very essential simple reason we are borrowing the treatment guidelines from us maybe canada uk we don't have our own tomorrow when we have our own data personalized treatment planning can be done to our population then to our maybe the state maybe to the district maybe to the hospital and finally to the patient so as the data quality data comes in we can make a personalized treatment plan data driven insight and decision support making decision support making actually started around 10 years back if you ask me 2010 professor uh, savita malhotra madam came up with tcs uh, tata consultancy and then how to use icd10 dsm4 and decision making support has already been done it is there but unfortunately many people did not use and we did not had the need at the time but now the time has come we need to adapt early detection and prevention these are the areas where it has been applicable let's understand the categories that is based upon how the application is remote sensing monitoring and variables that is the devices telemedicine you know i need not talk about this data analytics intelligence and predictive modeling the predictive modeling we are already using in the uh, statistical analysis here there it is a first level there tomorrow you can start telling the software application by using ai model how we can predict the future health and wellness that i did not tell everybody has how to lose weight and our uh, sadim uh, alim is uh, every day posting that i have done so much running i have done so much exercise that is a classical example of using those applications applied gaming applied gaming i'll come to that shortly mental health social media we are uh, everybody is posting social media what to be done what psychology says what psychiatry says those are the ways digitalized mental health record platform that is ehr patient physician portals we have not entered to that at least at this point of time some of them are started interacting with the patient do it yourself that diagnosis there are various softwares have come internet based where they can diagnose themselves or possible diagnosis are there i'll talk to you about that decision support system i spoke to you which is there already comprehensive model combination of above now based upon the based upon how the types it is wellness app i told distress based app diagnosis apps e documentation monitoring apps treatment apps rehabilitation apps and combination of the above this is how the implementation will be done so this is where the areas are going to cover that is the second question third question i'm asking what is the future of clinical practice in artificial artificial intelligence how is going to influence the clinical practice let me put it in very simple way health applications in the past 7 years i am predicting here i am put at this health applications are every day they are growing some of them are dying some of them are growing again every quarterly if you look at the quarterly report 
the number of applications are growing only. That means there is, uh, it's already coming to a plateau, but still many people are investing in a huge amount of money is being pumped into it. How much is the money? Digital health in 2023, it was $49 billion. By 2030, they are expecting $105 billion in digital health, my dear friends. And the compound annual growth is somewhere around 11.6%. It is a very good area. And many people are investing in the share market in this area. Why? The reason is, these we are talking about mental illness, chronic illnesses like diabetes, hypertension. We need to monitor them very closely because many a time, the doctor knows only the snapshot of the patient. He comes, he talks to us. We get a picture of the patient at that moment. We do not know what, how his heart is behaving, how his sugar levels are moving up and down. Similarly, in mental illness, what is happening, we are not able to know. That is the reason the monitoring is the requirement where many people are discussing about that. At the same time, we are geriatric population is increasing and digital tech savvy children are coming up. That means we have a kid who is born one year, he's already using iPhone on various applications, tablets he's using. So we have two types of population where both are required. In this regard, WHO has talked about and there on 26th May 2018, before the COVID only, in a 71st World Assembly resolution, they are told that we have to use digital technology to reach the unreached, both in universal health coverage and also with regard to sustainable developmental goal, WHO has adopted this. In this regard, they have come up with three recommendations. Uh, you can get it online. These recommendations for the policymakers, if you are working in that area, how to go about, they have already come out. That means it is a, a reality. Uh, we have to go ahead. The reason is wherever there is a sugar, the ants will come. Similarly, uh, already WHO was talking about because public health to reach to the last person, the way is digital technology. That is how the policymakers are deciding at the international level. At the same time, there is something digital phenotype is coming. The main uh, father of this, I would put it across is John Torres, a person from Harvard. What did he say about this? Similar to what we talk about genotypes and phenotypes, there is something called as digital phenotype. Digital phenotype means movement to movement, quantification of the individual level, human, human phenotypes in situ using data from the personal digital devices. Let me put it in a simple word. Uh, some of the data which each, the watch which collects from us, like maybe the watch you are having in your hand, wearing, it is collecting certain datas. That is passive data which is collecting. That is heart rate. What is your BP? How much is your temperature? Those are the things. That is passive data. Suppose if you are asked the patient to enter certain data by clicking something, by giving maybe Google form or maybe answering the mood. How is your mood? Over six uh, Likert scale, rate the mood active the input is the person is giving entering the data so what are those passive data speech analysis voice analysis voice analysis based parkinsonism can be diagnosed that is already patented the applications are being used that means early part of only parkinsonism can be de uh, detected now it is already been tested being tested for parkinsonism drug induced parkinsonism can we know whether this person is going to develop EPS, content consumption, how the person, like suppose a person is depressed, what is the social media content, where is he visiting, facial expression, based upon that, can we make a diagnosis, geographical movements, there are studies now which is telling, if a person is randomly moving very fast, it is based upon the past two months to current one month or two weeks, whether he is having mania, or he is going into the shell, not coming outside at all. Based upon that, they are trying to say whether we can predict the relapse. Social interaction, how does this, whether there is a perinatal study which says uh, the woman who is pregnant, how is her social interaction based upon that facial, uh, based upon the Facebook model, how much she is interacting, what she is posting, how much she is, they, are, they are predicting whether she will develop depression or not. The study is available. Physical activity based. Like suppose imagine Dr. Alim does not post about his exercise activity in the next 30 days. Whether is there any change in his behavior or mood, something has gone wrong, somebody can reach to him. Sleep based. Uh, sleep based is very important because one of the company from Pune, uh, the name is Dozi. They have come up with the first in the world 
where you can keep the sensors. It is just like a bed sheet. Put it under the uh, cot. It will measure heart rate. It will measure BP. It will talk about oxygen saturation based upon various parameters, which is patented, approved by FDA. And this is the first in the world where contactless BP measurement has been done and it is being marketed and it is currently in use. At least in 500, 7,000 beds have been monitored through the cloud. Think about this. And India is the first country to come up with that. So Dozy is the one which is available online. You can go through it. It's a beautiful system which is coming up. And they also monitor sleep. So if a person is going to have a relapse, sleep will be the first parameter which starts hampering. Can we predict heart rate variability, physiological data, and also sweat analysis, EEG recording. These are the future which is going to be there. Already in Taiwan, they have a hat which you wear. Is there any EEG changes? Two electrode was there. Now the four electrode based EEG directly transmitted through the SIM card to the uh, doctor and the doctor will be given notification. Yes, he's having seizure or not. They are all passive data. Doc, patient doesn't do anything. Active data. Active data is send the certain charting to the patient. Mood charting is done. Thought diary. Medication intake, whether he's taking or not. Anger charting. Substance intake, whether he's taking. Suicidal thought. Cognitive tasks. On that basis, that one. Similarly, in the area of forensic. Facial expression. Uh, comparing uh, hemifacial whether right side uh, facial expression versus left side, is there any change? Voice analysis, eye movements, heart rate, respiration rate, pupil, uh, body language, sweating, all these there are analysis are going, but unfortunately these softwares are not available to the public because of various reasons and they are tested. They are under the home ministries of various countries. They are not available for commercial use for various reasons. In this based upon both passive and the active data collection. One of the study was done in three places from our institute Nimans and also Harvard University from our team Urvaksh Mehta and also Prabhat Kumar Chand, the John Torres face from Harvard. We did this study on the relapse production in schizophrenia using smartphone and there again passive data was collected and also we are collected the active data where the patient they were ably they were able to predict relapse. So the study is available in the schizophrenia you can find. So now what is the challenge? The challenge is we need to bring those phenotypes, digital phenotypes, electronic health record and good medical records. All these three, if you are able to combine, we can have a complete longitudinal data of the patient, which will give you an amazing study because I will meet a patient after two months. We do not know what has happened in between two months. That the family will tell you this happened that happened we do not know the parameters what is happening with regard to heart rate various other digital phenotypes we are not getting if we are able to marry all of this let me tell you we are going to get a rich data and we will be able to predict the relapses so future is exponential growth of digital mental health is going to happen it is already happening unfortunately we are not involved if you are not involved we'll be left behind what are the reasons there are various reasons covid acceptable all those things what is the future? Numbers of apps are proliferating. There is unaccountable growth is occurring. Although US has come up with a regulatory, earlier FDA was only monitoring drugs, devices, now they started giving permission to the applications. Those applications which are tested and those applications which has to be prescribed by the doctor. Without doctor, those applications cannot be used. I'll tell about those applications. And we are moving to the digital world. Market is huge. Either we participate or we will be left behind. The reason is the policymakers and the people at large across the world, not just in India, across the world, believe digital can change the health perspective the, because of various reasons. The perception is different. We need to participate. Otherwise, we will be left behind. Left behind because they will go ahead and do it. Because every day, let me put it in a simple way. Today, there is an application which is released. Okay. And if I want to test it and the results will come after two years. By the two years, that application is redundant. That is the fast the applications are growing. Unfortunately, the testing is not done. That's where we have our own uh, what we call it as, no, no, it is harmful. If it is harmful, we have to participate and say this is harmful, we have to remove it. If you don't participate, gone. 
they will take the decision they will make the decision for us and we i will be the end user so that is how it is going to impact the practice now the question is is it effective how effective is digital health intervention uh, let me talk about the studies uh, summarizing some of the, the studies applied gaming is been used and there are many studies rct is available interview the internet based cbt computer based cbt virtual reality augmented reality mobile applications online therapy mood charting many of these have been found to be moderately helpful of course limitations are dropouts lack of engagement lack of personalization at the same time cultural adaptation is which is coming here which we need to keep an idea what is this app problem this is one of the biggest challenge in the software industry any application which has been downloaded today if it is not used in next 48 hours it will be not used at all that means user need to engage that to use it there is a mechanism which has been brought in now that is bringing a human being to make sure that the application is used that will be a leveraging point where health industry has to take it into this one that's where the application engagement statistic has been told by telling that sir we are releasing 100 application uh, 80 applications within a month been thrown out and only 20% are used in that again by some more days they will be thrown out only one or two applications become successful that is the story they are telling and of course now we have to find which are those applications which can be utilized is a biggest challenge now if you look at based upon i said there should be human being required so there are studies with regard to whether if you use digital health intervention alone versus a human being supporting that that means either a doctor telling to use that or maybe a technician maybe a nurse maybe a psychologist or a psychiatric social worker telling that sir are you using this did you wearing this what is happening How, what is your feedback adding a human component it may be a clinician non clinician that is human in the loop is becoming most important and it is in the best interest of the patient and that human touch has been found to be very helpful although there is a digital application many patients may not use it at all and it will be thrown out so for that reason we need to intervene and we need to enter into the mark into into the loop and start telling which is useful what is not useful and the studies example i can give you is this is a recently published where they are looking at whether engaging children and young people in digital mental health intervention systematic review of modes of delivery facilitators and barriers this is again if you look at the studies number of studies is 83 studies have been uh, considered for uh, review uh, look at the way uh, number of types of articles were taken like uh, web uh, based intervention 43 articles computer and uh, gaming based 23 apps mobile based 10 robo or digital devices 3 uh, virtual reality 3 mobile text based is 1 so what does the study said six modes of intervention 83 articles in children people that is adolescent prefer digital health intervention but there should be a person who says are you using it or not 79% of these it is again industry driven and also health care providers were involved that means there is a promising result what are the reasons the factors have been told from the side of the both intervention side and also the application side these are available you can go through it i will not enter into that similarly another article has been published evidence on digital mental health for adolescent and young people again a systematic review this is also study again this review is not just the review it is a review of 18 systematic reviews think 18 systematic reviews they have seen how it is useful that means it said any digital intervention if there is a in person element into that that means bring somebody into that suppose if i am telling use this application there should be a technician who calls and says sir have you downloaded this application do you have any difficulties after again two days sir we are getting the data we are not getting the data is there any problem okay help them out see whether the data is collected help them to acclimatize with the application if they have any concerns address that then it will be ad adopted and it has been found to be very useful that is where we play an important role the other important study which was recently published 
Gaming My Way to Recovery, a systematic review. This is published in Frontiers and the article has been published by Manuele Ferrari. Uh, the name is very interesting. This is again, this review identified the literature on video game intervention for young people age between 12 to 29. Young people is a number is from 12 to 29 years. This review focused on the whether video game can be used by the mental health and substance use problems. This is again, 49 studies were taken into consideration based upon the systematic review and uh, 32 relevant games were used and those studies were chosen. And again, these studies were based, the author has done a beautiful job. Here, what he did was he uh, stepped care model for video game. Step zero is for wellness. Step one, they have identified certain games, how they have used and step two to three for moderate mild to moderate uh, mental conditions they have used. Step four for severe cases. So these are the number of games which are available and this study is uh, fairly well done if you ask me. Please read this article. And here they say the finding supports the potential integration of digital games in youth services. That means it is useful. But the problem with this study is they have not addressed what is the potential harm, whether some patients who are substance user got addicted to these games, they have not answered to this. But they said they are being helpful for many of the patients. So whether it is a harm reduction strategy, we have not, they are unable to answer. But they said that, yes, it can be used. There is a user satisfaction is very high. Relatively high program retention in the treatment program has been answered in this. But again, they have not answered whether many of them developed gaming addiction has not been answered. Now coming to the uh, another important study, whether the digital intervention versus hybrid. Again, this is again a study was recently published that is uh, providing human support for the use of digital mental health intervention. This is a systematic review. Uh, here, what they did was they did the uh, results of 31 meta-analysis. This is not just one study. There are many studies available. They looked into the effect size and they said that, yes, it is useful. And now I will tell you, since it is inevitable, earlier FDA refused. Now I'm moving from the studies and the regulatory mechanism what is happening now. In FDA, that is in US, they started approving the applications. One is Endurex has been approved for ADHD, especially for attention. And this has to be prescribed by the doctor, that is psychiatrist. Here, this has been tested and found to be useful in attention, deficit disorder, basically focusing on attention only, not on the hyperactivity. And this, there are studies, RCTs are available and they, it is fairly good. That is where night wear is another one for nightmares in PTSD. This is application has been approved. Reset O, that is for opioid dependence, substance use. The applications apps are available. Again, this has to be given or prescribed, prescribed by the doctor. Similarly, some rest for sleep quality has been. So this started, that means already the countries who are ahead, they are started testing it, testing for the quality of the research application for the purpose of whether the data is shared or not, how the data is collected, whether they have used RCT or not, whether there was any problem in that or not. They are already started uh, monitoring these regulations about the applications. That means the currently it is a potential use is there, uh, both just not a digital one. There should be a human support. That human support can be a clinician. It can be a nurse. It can be a non-clinician. It can be a family member. It can be a technician. It can be a, a, a peer. It, it can be a user. Another patient who is using it can tell the patient and uh, slowly they can monitor that. That's where the digital mental health is going to make a major point, whereas for adopting, sustaining and outcome. I'll come into the last uh, fifth one, how will psychiatry, so this is, that means digital mental health intervention is going to be useful. That's how the studies have come. And uh, very few studies have said there is a very harmful effect is there because of the digital health intervention. Hardly few studies are there. How will it affect the psychiatry teaching research? Will it change is the question. That is the fifth. So now this general chat GPT, that is chat generative pre-trained transformer is coming to picture. Three is there, four has come, fifth is they are planning about that. There was a study done, which was published recently, assessing the accuracy and the reliability of AI. Whatever chat GPT was never tested in healthcare, and they did a study on this. 
this is a wonderful study which is available and it was a revolution what did they do in this study 33 physicians across 17 specialties generated 285 medical question 284 medical questions were done these 284 medical questions were given to chat gpt to generate answer those answers were rated on two parameters accuracy and completeness accuracy was uh, done mapped on six point likert scale ranging one for completely in, incorrect to six that is how they have done and if you look at the chat gpt score median score was 5.5 accuracy was 4.8 that means it is the accuracy is going to that level think about it one is completely inaccurate six is completely correct 4.8 and median is 5.5 what about the completeness of the answer it was mapped on three point likert scale and three is one is incomplete three is completely correct or completeness is there and the score was median was 3 and mean was 2.5 that means although this model was not tested in healthcare industry it is showing promise in the area of when you ask question to the chat gpt that means it is able to generate answers in regard to health field if we test it if we are able to test and see whether it is answering how to correct it see at the end of the day let me put it somebody has to code for it somebody has to say yes this is the right answer this is the wrong answer at the end of that you have to test it against the clinician or the clinical information if we don't enter into that somebody else will decide for us that's the way it is going to be there similarly another study how does chat gpt perform in us male examination that is us male so did gpt is chat gpt did it pass the exam here what did they do again two sets of multiple choice questions were given to chat gpt one was for step 1 from the ambos so the question questionnaire were taken and given to chat gpt and step 2 questionnaire were given to the chat gpt that means was administered look at the results again the results were third year medical student answers to that level it was able to answer that means it is passing the exams so chat gpt without being trained in medical it is passing the exams that means there is a compelling evidence to tell that this can be utilized tomorrow because otherwise what is happening is you type a question in google you will get answers for bipolar treatment from all possible angle somebody will say take food you somebody will say take this food somebody will say only therapy will work somebody will say only valproate will work all nonsense will be given in in the <coughs> sorry in the internet chat gpt is if the researcher is able to get involved chat gpt will give the evidence based answer otherwise the first year cannot go through the all pubmed articles similarly the public doesn't know whatever is seen on internet they will believe chat gpt will give the right answer but we have to get involved with that if you don't get involved again i'm same the answer is same so what is going to happen academics will improve it improves phenomenally immersive learning will become by explaining it's very difficult it's only one audio video mo mode will enter will improve quality teachers will come any time anywhere any place concept will come into picture the teacher need not be a physical teacher it will be a virtual teacher and as i mentioned pubmed has 35 million articles and tomorrow if you are able to invest in pubmed ai it will give answers for you no need to go for review article review article start coming down meta analysis will come down but we need to have research which has to continue that is original articles will be the day systematic review meta analysis analysis of meta analysis analysis of review will start coming down next is ai based inform consent will come because many a time people suspect the transparency of the doctors so artificial intelligence will be used to administer inform consent and finally the doctor will be there to take the final signature but the patient can sit in front of the ai ask 100 questions the ai will give you latest information and he agrees then he will go into that so ai and research what is going to happen in this icmr came up with a publication recently hardly one and a half month two months back the guidelines has been put up that guideline talks about 10 different important 
ethical principles please go through it if you are involved in that and it clearly says human in the loop should be there with regard to ai otherwise it will be harmful or we don't know whether it is harmful for the best interest of the patient human in the loop especially physician or the healthcare provider that is how it is going to be there the next one is co-authoring the article like shaul amin sir is there here as a the chairman of this uh, seminar suppose if i write an article using chat gpt can it be a co-author this was the question asked many of the publishers said nothing doing because the main problem is chat gpt will take information from all sources and it will not give credit to the original person it may take article from alim it may take article from mine and it will come up with its own answer that means it is not giving credit to the original scientist that is copyright issues are there intellectual property right is a big issue and no accountability tomorrow i can say sir it is chat gpt has written i am just a, a dr suresh i will not take any responsibility you sue the company chat gpt company so accountability will be placed on the chat gpt or the person who is using the ai the question is it is like this artificial intelligence is a nuclear weapon the problem is we should we get worried about the nuclear weapon or placing the nuclear weapon in a wrong person's hand that is the problem here artificial intelligence if it is placed in a wrong person's hand it is ultimately the human the corrupt human who is going to use the corrupt artificial intelligence will be the problem so what they, what should we do the good people should enter make sure that it does not fall into the bad people and if even if it is falls in the bad people and the good people should be in the forefront so that we can counter the bad peoples if they are coming up with the artificial intelligence their own software that means already chat gpt is going to play a role already it is been used in various name the application you go to any application you are using already artificial intelligence they are working on it if they don't work it they will be going out of the market within next 2 to 3 years if they have to be relevant they have to use artificial intelligence that means it is the reality so now question is sir should i use it or not if i don't use it some neighboring country will use or some my enemy will use or somebody else will use and they will use against you for that reason it is like a nuclear arm race can we ban everything no can we ban the drug is the question sir drug is bad everybody knows but can we ban it is simply impossible we have to have a regulation and use it for our better purpose that means drugs are useful for many drugs are useful for pain killing on various various other illness at the same time it is harmful also that means regulation that means by banning this chat gpt or artificial intelligence it is not going to help we need to make sure it does not fall into the wrong hand it is a nuclear weapon let me be put it very clearly clearly it is a nuclear weapon we should put it in the right hand the last question what are the challenges in the using i uh, hope uh, i have time uh, because another eight slides are there sure sir okay challenges opportunities i will run through uh, between the doctor and the patients uh, there are too many people are getting involved devices are there modem is there internet is there cloud insurance medical device electronic health record medical trans trans uh, trans uh, transcription uh, people are there finally if you are paying the bank is also knowing way which hospital you visited for what purpose you are paying money the bank is also knowing that means too many people are there between the doctor and the patient we need to come with the law the law which is there hipa compliance is there in us currently we do not have in india there was a data protection act was supposed to be released it was withdrawn there are a lot of questions are asked so we need to come up with this data creator that is the healthcare provider transmitter internet business associate subcontract we are going to be there we need to come up with the law law which is going to protect the patient and whoever makes mistakes had to have to be brought into account that is the only way go and we have to regulate without regulation it will be a biggest problem that is going to be the biggest challenge the challenge is like this healthcare industry is highly regulated but unfortunately application software we have a it act which is in 2000 rules are made again amended regulations are come policies are come that means it is minimally regulated they are growing very fast every day applications are going healthcare is not grow healthcare is also growing but it's not to that level we are marrying the both when we marry the both we have to know how it is going to evolve we have to place regulation you can't just ban artificial intelligence because it is a part of our life now we have to accept it how to engage it how to make it is the way to go forward 
the challenges are security privacy confidentiality we need to have a robust security now digital illiteracy is a problem in the rural area we have to engage them and also dropouts are there with regard to application so human should be brought into the picture healthcare service provider poor engagements need to be brought down data marketing is a big problem which is uh, who is the owner of the data is it the patient or the user or the company or the doctor or the hospital who own the data in simple reason is we have to come up with a policy the data of the patient will belong to the patient the collective data should become the owner should be the state and it should be used for the public health policy making it has to be anonymized that means if i know in this area every year there is a illness breakout occurs what is the pattern who are getting affected which area which place what is the strain it is going affected we are able to come to know we can predict we can give our meager resources whatever there and do that that means public health policy will be based upon real data every minute every second that will empower the government for that purpose it will play a major role that means there is an amazing opportunity but also the challenge last mile connectivity unregulated application is a big challenge we need to address that we have to bring in regulation we have to come into the picture already the policies have been discussed now and uh, i think today there was a newspaper they have told that we cannot have just one country making a law about artificial intelligence it has to united nation has to come into picture and it has to be agreed globally by everybody yes this is the law if anybody makes mistake we will take them collectively down uh, you can't launch an application in some sitting in some country and doing something else and finally we have to talk about unethical behavior see my behavior human behavior is regulated by moral my ethics my religion for application artificial intelligence there is no regulation there is no law no ethics for that we have to regulate human behavior we are coding that coding biases same time we have to see to that whether there is any bias is been suppose if i am coding and i will say the data should be taken only from us or should be taken from only india that means generalization of the data doesn't occur so we need to get involved even in the entry of the data production of the data and sharing the data that is the only way to go forward yes i can keep my data but unfortunately that will not give you the good information about my population so these logs which we are going to write should be clear and research on effectiveness should increase the future of digital mental health is personal data protection act has to come now it is high time wearable devices is collecting and aba card from there we have to link our all our data and to see to that sudden cardiac deaths are occurring whether there is already can we predict by looking at that somebody died suddenly sir that sudden cardiac death already showed something in their watches can we look into it predict it accepting the middle mixed model that is in person also with using data which is going to be a rich trans transparency is the key here accountability of all humans behavior has to be taken into account and of course this chat gpt or ai is going to break the myths of stigma of mental illness if i tell nobody may believe he is a psychiatrist he is trying to tell that if artificial intelligence which has been given a good data rich data it will give the good real answer that is based upon the data which is given educating public about this availability of resources service provider should be made easy tomorrow there will be life skills application suicide prevention apps parenting skill apps which is the need of the hour whos there is an application florence which is for substance use mental health and also for the tuberculosis that is there those application if it comes from the real reliable source the best example i can give you is our own application during covid which played an important role the us did not had india had that our own covid application covid app is it's, it's an amazing app so the application not only educates tomorrow you may come up with an app which tells that schizophrenia you go into that applied app and you Uh, mention your uh, whatever illness which has to be approved by the regulatory authority it will talk about medication it will talk about side effects it will talk when is your uh, time to go for the take to take medicine when is your next appointment what are the daily activities how much activities you have to do whether you are logging in whether you are not logging out that means you will get a complete picture of the schizophrenia that means tomorrow you will not only tell that you have to take the spiridon and you will tell that you download this application which is approved either by the government of india or ips indian psychiatric society let me put it in simple term nabh accreditation is not a government body it is a 
private body society similarly we have to come up with either telemedicine society of india along with ips can come up with accrediting these applications by using engineers whether there is a data collected not collected leaving everything to the government yes good the fda took hardly one year back they started doing and if we leave it to the other people it may take another many centuries or maybe many years before that we need to start telling yes this application is useful for our population we should start working on that that means regulation should start coming just uh, being uh, standing and seeing whether let the people play and we will uh, later take the decision is not going to happen we have to take that and bedless hospital is going to be the future that is what the dossier i told you about this from the pune that will happen very fast bedless hospital will be the future the simple covid we know earlier they said everybody should be admitted then say they said only 1% of the population may require in covid infected uh, they may if they have abcd come and get admitted that will happen and tomorrow we will say who requires admission it will not be based upon the uh, based upon the doctors it may be based upon the application may be risk assessment and it will say yes this person requires admission and it will be brought this is maybe around 20 30 years down the line that will be objective based supervision supervision has to occur with regard to e prescription supply of medicine will be there and ea assisted decision making research of course uh, there will be a definitely change in the research way we are going to do and inform consent what i told about that academics will change uh, tomorrow we are attending here in this kind of seminar will be less over a period of maybe around 2 to 3 years down the line ai will be teaching lessons rather than dr suresh so that means who will teach the ai i have to i have to sit and discuss with the ai what you are going to teach what is the data rich available how you are going to present it that means we have to become the teacher for the ai not to the public so that is the way it's going to evolve that means the digital will multiply 100 times that is how we are going to be there and tomorrow exams will be conducted by the gpt because people will say this doctor is not biased for various reason so chat gpt is going to conduct exam and that will be able to tell to conclude my dear friends ai will it replace mental health professionals no it will not replace mental health professional at any cost yes it will replace those mental health professional who do not adapt to ai how to use it how to use for the benefit of the patient how to use it for the benefit of the public policy there it will be very useful creativity why it will not there are reasons creativity empathy emotions human touch networking with people leadership skills accountability purpose at larger cause socializing this ai is not able to crack at this point of time they are claiming many of the software company this part is very difficult if you are able to do it maybe around maybe 30 or 40 years down the line till then it is not going to replace us invariably by that time regulation if we are sitting there we will say yes it has to be regulated by a human person that is human in the loop and coming to psychiatry psychiatry objectivity is the biggest problem that is the uh, we are talking about this from the beginning sir uh, somebody says that objectivity will protect psychiatry the simple reason is it is difficult to quote quote this psychiatry as a subject into a software that means invariably the subjective way of a mental health professional interpreting the behavior interpreting the emotions interpreting the in what we call it as a um, sir your interpretation we interpret this way the human behavior that will be done by human behavior only that means we require at this point of time whatever the technology which is there today it is not going to replace but it will replace those people who refuse to adopt it will change the nature of the job but it will not completely wipe out if i am going to adapt today i will not be replaced we had this problem that computer will replace everyone it replace certain jobs only but the people who adapted similarly now every software who is who is a coder is worried my job will be replaced yes if he does not upgrade himself to a ai specialist he will be removed but if he upgrades he will be still in the relevant in the market the market is artificial intelligence my dear friends so the technology is going to play a major role you can say it is unregulated but the public will say sir it does not have bias it does not talk about geographical discrimination it is does not have therapist bias there is no racial discrimination unconditional support it will give unconditional acceptance is there that means there is positive also and negative also and it will provide care at the comfort of home that is what 
is there. So my answer to this is at this point of time, whatever technology we have, it is not going to replace mental health professionals, my dear friend. Thank you one and all. I'm happy to take questions. Over to the uh, chairpersons. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. A really wonderful, encompassing, lucid presentation. All of us are richer now. Over to chairpersons for their opening remarks. Now, it was uh, very useful, very comprehensive. Uh, thanks, Dr. Sudesh. Uh, because uh, you did not restrict yourself to chat GPT, you also covered the field of digital uh, mental health as a whole. That was very useful. Otherwise, uh, like we would uh, miss the context. And also, you did not restrict yourself to the clinical field as such. You discussed the research aspect. You discussed the ethical aspects and all. So that also was uh, very useful. Just uh, two comments about that, what you told about the publishing part. Actually, initially, there were some papers published uh, within various renowned journals, even receiver journals and all with uh, Chair GPT as a co-author. Right. But after that, they woke up and then some guidelines came from various publishers that you cannot include. Now, most of the journals say that you cannot have it as a co-author. And also, if you have used it in any parts of your research, maybe for literature review, maybe to improve the language, you have to mention that in the article that uh, it has been used. And... Uh, they are saying that you can use it, especially, especially that is good for us, for those from India and all, because we can use that to improve the language and grammar and all, but not to do that review part, because there, there are more chances of errors, because the kind of scrutiny that we do when we humans are doing the review, we experts are doing the review, that kind of uh, scrutiny the, chat, the artificial tools cannot do at the moment. So you should not use that for review when you are using that for a research purpose, you for a submitting an article, that is what the guidelines say. So over to you, Dr. Rahamid. Uh, sir, please unmute. Unmute. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was very elaborate and uh, so lucid presentation. Uh, I, I really appreciate the Professor that he has uh, made such a nice pre presentation, comprehensible for everyone. And what I have noticed is that um, most of the attendees of this uh, webinar, the, they were putting their comments praising this presentation. Uh, so finally, in a nutshell, that what the most important thing that we are worried of is that uh, we need to replace the mental health professionals. Um, regarding that, uh, Dr. Kuresh has answered it very well. Uh, this will never ever be possible to replace basically the mental health professionals. Though the chat GPT or the evolving artificial intelligence have some role in medical illness, stereotypical conditions, but not in mental health professionals where we need to have indulgence, the human indulgence, that we, we, we need to have real the empathy, the human connections, and uh, the emotional part of the of the involvement um, and uh, that is uh, hardly will become possible for artificial intelligence but one thing is sure is that the chat GPT is isn't really amazing it's, it's amazing i have been experimenting i have been asking so many questions and it it really astonishes by its uh, responses in a so precise uh, way uh, so if, uh, if from my point of view, if I see the future of this chat GPT in mental health care, then I would say that it is having definite, definite a rule, a role over. And if we integrate it into our uh, practice, then it is definitely going to help in our pre-diagnostic screening. That's what the scope of chat GPT uh, as I'm uh, seeing from my perspective. And definitely, it is going to um, clash with uh, basically psychologists and therapists who are practicing solo, solo psychological uh, practitioners, uh, practitioners, psychologists who are practicing um, in that way. Other than uh, this, uh, mostly the good points is uh, seen, the, is uh, favorable points, except, uh, except that is uh, the privacy part. The, uh, the privacy part that is going to be uh, seriously hampered uh, if we integrate uh, this AI uh, in our practice, if we keep on monitoring each and every aspect of, uh, of our patients, as um, Dr. Suresh was uh, talking in his initial part of his slide, uh, uh, monitoring the patient, whether a, manic, uh, whether a patient of bipolar is going to develop a, a manic sheep or he's going to be a depressive all these uh, uh, extensive monitoring processes is going to 
um, hamper the personal life, the privacy of the patient, and if the data goes to some bad hand, criminals, then it can cause a very uh, uh, disastrous consequences. Anyway, my special thanks to this IPF Odisha State Bank for their so nice and fantastic uh, efforts with the name of this Sarge the Music. And especially, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Amrit for giving me this opportunity and taking me in this uh, fantastic, fantastic, mind-blowing session. So with this, I hand over to the series chairman and the moderators of this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Amrit. Back to Kar. To the Dhani Yogi, I will never become richer. So let me see how rich you are. Okay. okay, Suresh, so, 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 so just let things into perspective. Uh, interacting with ChatGPT, OpenAI, first of all, there are many such platforms. ChatGPT might be the most popular one, but there are many things generating videos, generating audio and whatnot. So, so we are we interacting with a, with a thing that knows everything and so he's uh, so that, so that, that thing is able to tell us about medical or the psychiatry uh, aspects that are there we are talking about this a all knowledgeable person who is giving us data because he has all the data from the psychiatry to cooking biryani to playing cricket or what is it so that is agi that is artificial general intelligence that's what chat gpt is See, it was not made for medicine. Let me put it very clear. It has to be tested now. Slowly, they are testing by studies and looking at if we are able to come up with tested model, who knows tomorrow, who knows Infosys or may some company or maybe Wipro or somebody says, why not try this model, AI model for health, especially for psychiatry, why not? So it can break many myths. We have to get involved. If we don't get involved, somebody else will write something. It's like this. If I'm not there on the internet, Somebody who will come and they will talk nonsense. This is the reality. This is again one of the Bangalore being considered as the science city in one of the, uh, I think CNR Rao sir, I think has told me in, in one of the talk he said, see, it, unless scientists get involved, uh, what will happen is you will launch a satellite. Using that satellite, somebody will come and sit in the night and will tell you through the television, what is your planet? Your planet is this side, that side. And that is where we are going. Instead of that, use this technology for the betterment of the human science. So the, he said, unless we don't involve, somebody else will write whether bipolar illness is not an illness and it will be treated by somebody. We have to get involved. We have to say, yes, we require this. We require how to require. See, it's, it's again, a artificial intelligence is a coding. You have to write that. And you have to explain and you have to see to that how well it will be coded. And it has to learn on its own over a period of time. So that we have to play a role. It's a kid now at this point of time. If you don't bring up the kid properly tomorrow, it may harm us. Who knows? So we have to be involved and to make sure that the kid is not abused. That is the way I can put it in a simple way. Currently, AGI is general one. Specifically, we require for health. Uh, sir, are these, are the, in the, all these applications, are the tech guys, the, those from IT sector, from IITs, do they have an upper hand in mental health also? And see, mental health, they, don't, they are, do not have. They know what is their COVID during that time. There is a distress. They are now, IT industries are very worried about their wellness. They are suicidal. It is increasing. The IT, the IITs, there were many suicide were happening. Uh, we have now come up with telemanus. Tomorrow, who knows, by another uh, five years or 10 years down the line, AI will be answering the first, instead of counselor, the AI will answer. Then the counselor will come. Then the mental health professional. Step by step, we will increase. So who knows? But their upper hand is technology unregulated technology. They yeah. don't know what is right, what is wrong. Whether this is helpful in health industry, whether asking the patient, whether you are, you are you ministrating today, is it ethical to ask or not? They don't know. So that we have to sit with them, boss. This is not the way. This has to be anonymized. This data cannot be asked. There is a Mental Health Care Act. There is a regulation here. So similarly, there, is, there should be a regulation written. These engineer who comes, who is brilliant, he doesn't know anything about the healthcare industry. Ethics of Medicine, he doesn't know. He will write whatever he wants. Unless we sit with him and tell them, boss, <clears throat> you need to be very careful in this area. Unless we engage them, that will grow very fast and we will not grow. We have to be together with them and see to that it is used. See, 
artificial intelligence is going to be human being we have to bring in ethics and regulation for that if you don't bring in in the when we are writing the uh, algorithm we have to bring those ethics now only if you don't bring in tomorrow it will become uh, obviously there was one software uh, artificial intelligence started uh, giving back wrong answers abusing the person you are not a researcher what kind of answer you are a uh, question you are answering uh, you are not fit to be human being it will say that so unless you teach that algorithm how to answer how to bring that cultural cultural aspect has to be brought into that so the same question which is asked in us and it is asked in india we have to bring that ai is best example first level of artificial intelligence which was the best example is amazon alexa which is there in us if it answers in a separate way in india which is brought in here they have to they have to tell about cricket because many questions were asked in cricket for alexa so they have to tell which is who is the god of cricket it has to tell sachin tendulkar it can't say that something else in india so you have to culturally adapt this artificial intelligence and also language how it is answering dialect they are doing it already so we have to get involved with them for psychiatry and again language also differs from one state to another state so india is a place we can do all this i can say i can build an ai test it in telangana test it in bihar test it in assam test it in uh, and see whether the language whether it is we are able to bring in an amazing model which can be useful okay okay yeah two things first of all for the comment that you told i think without knowing ai neither can we accept it neither can we reject it we reject, we reject a lot of things because we know nothing about it so i think it is very very important that we understand what it brings to us and then we either we accept it or reject it and now most important thing is uh, does it make medical education redundant now now, okay. now what what i mean to say is that why do we need to study why do we need to study 10th why do we need to study now kids are asking me why do i need to sir learn maths i have a mobile i put it it gives me an answer in 30 seconds why do i waste 15 years of my life doing what you are doing in a sir you have studied maths but you are using a calculator i have a computer everything is available i will become a youtuber i will become a gaming agent why should i do all these things now why should somebody read mbbs somebody read psychiatry now everybody become so i think somewhere the and there's a question there one or two questions also the, it, it 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 takes a hit on the skill development of people now Ah, you, you are talking. It's it's not so easy to develop. You know, India has forty languages, five hundred. You know, even in a small place like Manipur, we have three or four different kinds of thought processes now. So, how does AI or chatbot relate to all these things and give a proper answer to whatever questions are thrown at it? So, what your take on it? Yeah, my take is very clear, uh, Amrut. We don't get involved. That means we are going to see. It's like this: eighty percent of the devices which we are going to import is from abroad. that means we don't have our own device 80% is from outside 20% we are making our own devices that means we don't know whether this device have been tested in india or not so dozy is the one which i told for india i have objection here suresh i wait wait wait, wait. Is similarly for the application i'm telling you move towards the application which is developed somewhere else we have to develop our own it has to be locally relevant locally important and it should be the problem for that area then only it will be useful that is the way it is you brought a amazing one whether the medical education becomes redundant of course it will become redundant unless it will be like this the the student when he joins he should start get exposing to the hospital how to talk to a patient that skill to be developed because see earlier during my mbbs your mbbs it is how much i take in and how much i vomit now that is not we have to change our way of teaching our students they should spend more time with the patient what kind of patient see again we read harrison we said uh, we read david davidson uh, that means we everything uh, again today's medical education i'll tell you they are reading about all education system brought from harrison davidson all western books and when you send this doctor to a phc he is seeing indian patient he doesn't know there is a ct scan available or not he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know how to talk to a patient from the first day onwards we have to expose our doctor and we have to make that you learn whenever you are free knowledge is available everywhere earlier whoever has knowledge is a pandita now the knowledge is at the fingertips it is available at the phone so the best teacher will be available you decide you decide you start from the day one spend time let him learn in phc that would be the model by another 10 or 20 years down the line because the skills will be very important nobody will ask you your degree they will said now tell me how will you treat this 
treat the patient and show or tomorrow they are going to hire you they will say 10 days i will give you prove your worth then only i will fix your salary that means it will be skill based not knowledge based skill based hiring will be there and that skill is very important that means we are moving from knowledge that means whoever is knowledge no, nobody will bother about knowledge is available everywhere how much is your skill how will you talk to the patient how will you talk to the family how will you engage that networking capability ai will not be able to do that is where the human comes into picture thank you sir thank you sir most, uh, of, most of the software are made by indians no throughout the world hardware is non indian i think dictated by somebody can... else somebody dictated by somebody else yes that's the uh, main if rao sir is there i think we can take his comments rao sir mm, first of all suresh a wonderful wonderful lecture uh, the reason is that you know for the first time i'm listening about this content i know i have read here and there but you gave me so succinctly and i would also say just now in uh, the sunrise at hyderabad class there he hit a century in 51 balls i think you hit century in 10 balls you hit the century in 10 balls thank you sir having said that uh, my own concern is only two things of course people like uh, as old as us uh, how soon can we learn this if at all one and of course i am i am definitely interested for the larger group i think today i saw about 270 people watching you or even more i don't know on the youtube so my question would be what is the negative side what is the flip side of this uh, i mean you told us very clearly that you know you need to be have the human interface and psychiatry obviously cannot be easily changed like heart rate 72 and all these kind of things can't be kept so what would you look at the flip side of this say year to 2035 or 2031 see i'm sure by 2030 we are going to have because i'm i'm just going through this as uh, three days i've been reading only these articles and uh, you gave me the summary very nicely thank you very much okay so sir my take will be first one is by another 15 or 20 years down the line my major concern will be privacy the data available everybody marketing it and uh, using that one that is my first concern second concern is what i said about the uh, mimicking the human brain if the technology starts mimicking we are able to reach to that level we have not reached that uh, where i told you the last part of this uh, human brain kind of thing if you are able to come up with if it start uh, bargaining with human being telling that my survival is important than your survival because this is again a question asked one of with of my friend i asked him whether the terminator will occur here in india or india means across the globe the terminator movie where machine versus man then he laughed and said suresh we have not cracked the third dimension of the time if we are able to crack the third dimension of the time and you are working in ai somebody will come from the future to assassinate you if it has happened then yes we have broken and artificial intelligence will take over we will die the day when the third dimension of the time comes into picture yes suresh you what you are saying is right second third my concern is very important is this if we don't engage the software industry they will grow and they will dictate us are we ready for that no we have to engage them now the question is should i learn artificial no i don't need to learn artificial intelligence i need to know about the concepts sit with the young kid who are working on coding artificial intelligence you sit with them and tell them see many of them are many of these amazing software have come by a person who is suffering from mental ill and they have coded they have come up with sir this software i have done it is useful for mood charting sit with them and say what do you require involve the users and come up with an amazing software application which can be used by the patient the the best example is mind lamp which has been done by the harvard uh, nimans is involved it is by a user he is going to use it and he says sir it has to be changed this is not good for us you change the way it is asking question the way you are uh, collecting the data i am not happy with this they will dictate they have to be involved that means the software the healthcare service provider health user all three should be involved what application to be developed then only it will be an amazing which will grow if we don't engage ourselves that means somebody else will write somebody else will write according to their need and it will be a mess that should not happen we cannot completely ban we cannot completely neglect we have to be in the game that is the way you can't ban artificial intelligence from india if you ban tomorrow artificial intelligence from india somebody else in the neighbor will come up with an amazing and they may black us out back so we have to be part of it we have to regulate no banning will help no going unregulated is good 
we have to regulate the law has to come into picture sir thank you sir thank you. Uh, actually i have been approached by a few uh, companies regarding this uh, what they want to negotiate is they do not want to make me partner they want to keep me on payroll so because of that the deal fell out uh, i didn't want to do that so so i think i think we should ourselves uh, uh, generate this thing and we we should collaborate with the uh, with the the coders that you said i think that is a very 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 genuine uh, thing absolutely absolutely uh, anyway i have a last question to yes sir to the suresh uh, what would be the consequences say for example if a patient of uh, depressive disorder is depending on chat gpt and uh, ultimately culminating into suicide uh, so if those kind of situation comes in front can the creators of chat gpt be held responsible be made liable for that because if, if you type i am having depression the chat gpt is going to give you a lot long list of suggestions and you do do and do not and everything so what is your uh, opinion in this regard sir amazing question sir i was expecting this question how well see it is very difficult to predict human behavior we can predict because we have given the the algorithm if something is wrong in chat gpt we can correct it we cannot correct the human behavior that is where the problem it should not fall into the wrong hands before it falls into the wrong hands we have to engage them and say this is the algorithm which is required this is what is to be told if a person is suicidal if a person is depression this is the right see chat gpt which has been done it is for general ai that is a general intelligence it is nothing to do with medicine we are unnecessarily testing it unless if it is able to get the data from the pubmed publish the article who knows tomorrow i want to develop a ai for our own country india coming being, uh, the data should come from from the ijp maybe good rct articles i would like to take the, those data and that will be used for the writing the algorithms and say yes this is for indian patients and it is based on that we get, we have to involve sir if we don't involve what you said somebody else will write and somebody else will tell something to the patient is it good way I, that is the problem it should not fall in the wrong hands and some ignorant fellow will write something else that should not happen a researcher a clinician an academician patient patient family members should be engaged in writing those ai which is better for them for us as a clinician then only it will survive it will be very it is a nuclear weapon how will we use it that is the way that is the best analogy i analogy i can give you sir otherwise everything is creative way we can think of so we have to get engaged and say how to better to use it you can't ban internet for my child i have to tell the child how to use it properly yeah. similarly here also this is a, a new tool we have to get engaged and use it banning is not the way and absolutely one more thing uh, uh, as dr omrit has told actually that is very thought provoking that kids are feeling about why should i learn mathematics or why should i uh, learn medical science now is, is every information is there in there in ai but one thing for sure we may uh, really yeah. and that is until and unless some computational system uh, uh, that becomes uh, uh, like neural source of the way that human brain processes that information the similar source of a similar metaphor like human brain is created and uh, until and unless that is not possible ai will never be able to replace the human especially in doctors though uh, elsewhere though elsewhere in japan is if we see the robots have taken over uh, the responsibilities of housekeeping staff reception staff and lots other salesmen or trainers and everything but no doctor and especially uh, psychiatrist can never be replaced at what i believe maybe we yes, will not i completely agree with you phone. i completely agree with you because this is one of the question which is again very uh, psychiatry can be given in a very concrete way suppose tomorrow there is a robot and that robot is very beautiful having sex with the robot versus a human being whether can we connect with that yeah can we connect yeah. see tomorrow there may be a patient who goes to amrut because amrut has able to make the 
feel the patient. Patient feels, I go to this doctor because he makes me feel good. Will the AI do it is the question. Yeah. If we are able to crack that, that connectedness between the two human beings, that means we have lost yeah. our race. Yes, and you till we are not till now we are not able to do that connection. And if you do that, but again that sir again that connection is been slowly we have been found between autism and the robot. There mm -hmm. they are saying robot can be used in training for autism, and those kids are able to relate with the robot. I don't know. That's again there is some there. I don't. That's where future may detect. Still, it is a question at this point of time. It is not possible. Right, and this sad point, the that connectedness is one. How well we make the person feel. Yes, sir. this is going to um, definitely this is going to demand a new form of diagnosis. This is going to create a new form of mental health issues in the society. Very short because these things are said, those are these things are pretty available and it mm. is uh, transported across the globe. Sir, obviously, I, I completely agree with you. By next 10 years down the line, nobody will be writing. Writing means SLD part, some of them will go. Reading will be less. Some reading dyslexia will go off. That yeah, means, yeah. see these, whatever SLD is our own makeup of our reading, writing, language. So we have made by ourselves, that is the illness. No, no, that there will be some important. other illness. People who can't that, type properly. Obviously, People digital SLD will be properly. there. Ah, digital SLD will really come in. I think dyslexia could be there, yeah. Digital <laughs> dyslexia will be there. That will come because many people find it very difficult. They say, sir, I don't know how to navigate the uh, internet or I don't know how to use the computer my child uses. That digital SLD will come, but this SLD may go off. Who knows? Some of the illness may go off. Suresh Bas, what is the regulatory authority in India regarding the jobs? Okay, yeah, again, it's a yeah, again one more video I'm doing for my YouTube. Okay, this regulatory authority we have to see. It's now only the IT Act one. If it comes to health industry, all health regulations will come into picture. Unfortunately, the engineer doesn't know about that. That is the biggest problem. We have to engage them. Lawyers have to come in. Data protection, those will come into picture. IT, Mental Health Care Act is there. So that means that will come in. RPWD Act is there. You can't say something very badly on artificial intelligence uh, because name calling in RPWD Act is very clear. You cannot name call a person with disability. That has to be told. It has to be disability friendly. So again, the artificial intelligence has to be made compliant with our rules and regulation. So all the laws which is applicable in person should be applicable for artificial intelligence in a simple word. But unfortunately, we have not written a law at this point of time. Personal data protection bill is still pending. The day will come, it will be released. Definitely, it is not only for India. It has to be written by the United Nations. International law is required for artificial intelligence. So is it possible to govern AI with so much laws? See, it is, it is, see, it is like this. Finally, who is going to code it? It is the human who is going to code it. That human has to be regulated first. If I am the coder, I have to be told, boss, you are not going to code like this. If you are going to code this, we will remove from the market and you, you will be accountable for that. That is where the human in the loop, what I said, who is coding has to be accountable. It's not the artificial intelligence. It can't be because it's a software. You can't make it accountable. Who is going to code it? How it is going to run it? That regulation is not that. That is the people, everybody in the industry is telling that, sir, it is unregulated. We have to regulate it now. Even in US, chat GPT, people are going and asking for the uh, White House telling that, make some law for us. They are themselves, they are going there because so they if, are worried if it is falls into the wrong hand. So it, if it is developed in Ethiopia and available on darknet, then how will you regulate that's where, that's a, that is the reason I said United Nations has to regulate. International, it has to be ring in. So international, everybody should get together and start regulating it before it goes into the wrong hand. So the bird will shrink more, I think. Then. A simple man, nuclear weapon, if it falls into the wrong hand, what will happen? AI will happen, same thing. If it falls into the wrong, wrong hand, it will be worse. If it is in the right people, it will be used for the best use. You can control uh, Ethiopia, but you can't control uh, you know, AI gone rogue. <laughs> so, Arim, so yeah. 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 <laughs> 940, Shaul boss is also, you, know, you will not stop because you are not alone. <laughs> Shaul boss. <laughs> Uh, was any comments from you? And no, 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 no. We, we have discussed in depth all aspects. Very good discussion.
Yeah, it's already a bit late. Yeah, so far, sir, comments from you? Uh, it is a very nice topic and very well presented and explained by Dr. Suresh Badamach, a dear friend of mine, dear younger brother of mine, and he is brilliant, Charles. And he being a legal expert, he has very adeptly advocated in favor of AI and chat GPT. And he has so shown his advocacy excellence in that. But still, in as we stand now, I have got a number of buts. I do not accept the cons personally, personal view, totally clearly, completely as a whole. Reasons, the issues of privacy, the issues of confidentiality, the issues of autonomy, and the issues of diversity of this things that has to be put into the coding system so that the AI develops. And above all, the evolving AI, what we are thinking of AI today, after five years, AI has evolved a lot. It can have auto connectivity also. And they are working on that. And in background of all this, what Alim told, definitely if it is vital, Darknet will take over it, be it from Ethiopia or be it from US. As in that, 10% is only surface web. Surface web plus deep web. 90% is dark web which governs everything. So when you have to, we can develop guards for all these factors, I think it will be possible that we will sell it as a product or as a remedy to the patients. Otherwise, there will be always buts. Such a diverse country, India, and we have to think of the global diversity also. So many indigenous people, indigenous cultures, indigenous beliefs. We cannot forget their language that should not be allowed to be suppressed by the data published in American Journal of Psychiatry, Australian Journal of Psychiatry, Indian Journal of Psychiatry. They don't publish anything with any of their voices. Why do you have data for them? So it is a big task, but with Swiss Bajabar's leadership, let us have it and break the nut. Thank you, Suresh. But my concern is the darknet people have already this developed DI. What will you do? They will. They have That's got the reason we have to be. They, they, as in today, 90% is darknet. Yes. Sir. Four to five percent is surface net of on which we are quibbling. The rest is the deep net. It's just like conscious, subconscious, <laughs> and unconscious, <laughs> just like that. So danger is there. And yeah. most complicated thing is if I develop, in, introduce, even for Odisha it is difficult. We speak so much of dialect, so, so much of cultural diversity. And a symptom cannot be not uh, interpreted without the cultural factor taking into consideration. So these factors have to one by one developed and simultaneously you have to respect the autonomy, confidentiality of the patients here and privacy of the patients. We cannot tell this is the product you take it and it is imposed on you. Uh, I did not number such answers. Network is very bad. If you are beating your mother, you are not treated. You will be able to deny it. So, a lot of tasks are new. Dr. Badamat. The rest is the ball is in your court. You have to develop it and teach us. Thank you very much. So, I would give a formal thank you. First of all, Suresh, thank you for coming. I have only one problem. You know, most important thing is data protection. Next is the AI that is used. I'll tell you, psychiatry is the only branch where somebody sleeps for three days on 0.25 milligram lorazepam and does not sleep at 10 milligram lorazepam. You take antibiotic, you take any drug, you know, nothing, nothing is like psychiatry. You know, diabetes, 500 is the blood level, you give this much of sugar level, you can, psychiatry, you cannot do that. The same diagnosis, we have thousand permutation combinations of treatment. And no other disorder or disease will have this much of permutation. I think the only field where I, AI will actually fail will be psychiatry. Diagnosis, you know, why I'm telling you is that I see, I see a lot of youngsters now coming me with diagnosis. Sir, I'm having ADHD. I'm having autism. I'm having this. And 99% of the times those diagnoses are absolutely bullshit. I think it will take a long, you know, diagnosis, it might help. 
as long as we are not there they cannot do anything about it data protection is the most important we buy any you know tool and if the data gets lost we are in a soup so we cannot trust and our data is lost you know we lose patients we lose a lot of things lot, lot of you know people can use you know if it is data is gold our data is platinum and platinum and platinum so so you know that's those are the two important things we need to be very careful about so is thank you for coming saul boss thank you. thank you for taking your time out from a very very busy schedule rizal thank you for coming it was a lovely presentation more than 320 logins so we'll call you again saul boss you also you know something similar to this we can have another presentation okay okay thank you thanks for that good night thank you thank you everybody thank you everybody thank you serious nice topic thank you sir. and good advocacy thank yeah, you yeah. mit has left so so i think i'll slide he has left slightly disagree on the part that every branch of medicine will have erratic responses exactly all the all the branches not uh, all the healing systems in the world will be part of this have to be part of this so it is a complex task you have to take it okay okay thank you so much thank you so much everyone closing the meeting now sir yes